Okay, so here I am. I'm about to tell my life story to you. Uh, not at all comfortable with the camera in front of me, but I thought it was the most personal way to tell my life story. I think it's I think it's interesting. It's really strange. Well, I think it's interesting because I did a did a lot of things in my life, but what I'm now I'm, what I'm now doing is 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 I never thought I would have done. I'm in this room which I kind of created myself. Um, crazy enough, and I'm still flabbergasted by it um, or with it. It's, uh, oh, yeah, this is cool. I have always stars and on my ceiling. So there's a whole story behind it and I really feel to share it with you. Um, that we can change and that we can do lots of things in our lives. And I think we all have our own stories and I think it's really interesting to share our stories with each other because we can learn from from them. Uh, so I just pretend that I'm talking with a person instead of sitting in front of a camera. So here we go. Oh, tell us something about yourself. Oh, how did you end up in this room? <laughs> well, uh, I did lots of music previously. Um, when I was young, I was really, really fond of music. I loved music. Music was my life. My parents loved music as well. So we went to concerts and saw the artists and big artists on stages and was like, wow, when a young child, you know, a young child always in front of the stage and sitting next to the speaker. It's a miracle I can still hear. No, okay, but anyway, uh, I was really loving music and I started at a pretty young age doing music. Um, and there was a piano in the house and of my parents and I was really like, yeah, this is what I feel to do. So I started uh, specializing after my parents said like, yeah, you can do just one or you know just focus on one thing uh, because i loved sports i was like outdoors all the time and did all things but music was eventually really my focus point and i really thought like i can make a living of this uh, i started to do classical um, so i got some private lessons for some years i think i don't remember that well but uh eventually I was just like I want to play with other kids I would like to play with other instruments and, and bands and all that stuff I would like to play together so I went to a local music school and did there some piano lessons with a great teacher by the way um, yeah I was really strict I think but really I learned lots of those years um, especially also in the combination with the music school um, we uh, I, I learned pop but also jazz and there were other kids playing also music instruments so it was really easily to get together and play in in a band so it went from pop to jazz to rock to funk to soul and playing uh, eventually uh, concerts and rehearsals and recordings uh, in the studio just for fun and yeah it was really cool I think but it was also overwhelming um, and I'm not only talking about this as if it was uh, a dream life uh, contrary I think it uh, uh, as I remember, I have nice memories, of course. There were lots of fun and a lot of things, but there was also, I think, one of the most heaviest time in my life. I don't have the feeling I had really a 
a young, uh, uh, when I was young, a, a childhood, which was normal. Uh, there are so many details of this and maybe I will make uh, uh, or write a book about it or something or take more time for it. So music school, but pretty overwhelming with the bands because, you know, anyway, it was going and it was like a snowball effect and uh, I played in a jazz band with some, yeah, same age uh, and we were really young and we played concerts here and there. Eventually I played with more bands around it and uh, yeah, at the same time I had the high school. So uh, I still had to do school and did my homework, but I was, yeah, playing more and more music and I didn't have the priority anymore to do school. So at a really young age, I was already, I needed to make choices like, okay, am I going to play with friends or am I studying music, you know, am I practicing or am I writing or I'm working on my technique and okay, I'm not saying that I was always dedicated to practice. I like to play music, but I like to play the music I already could play, you know, that was most fun. I didn't like to learn always new things, um, but motivated and dedicated I was, and I wanted to make a living out of it. And it was really a strange time because I was playing already with, uh, yeah, with bands and I earned already money when I was that young age. I mean, I could not live from it really, but it was coming. Uh, and, but at the other hand, uh, a lot of questions of other people were there, you know, prove you needed to prove that you really can keep up with, you know, can you make a living out of music or, or just art? You know, it has uh, a lot of, in, in general, we talk about art like it's a hard living to make make a living. Um, so as a kid, there was a lot of pressure. Um, a lot of kids didn't knew even what they wanted to do uh, in school. So they had to choose a direction, um, what subject to study. Uh, and eventually what kind of money can I gain from it? Or I was already knowing that it would be maybe hard to have uh, music as a, as a job or as something what could give me income so I can live in a house and stuff. And I was already telling my parents like, if I, I'm gonna do this anyway, even if I have to, to eat white beans in tomato sauce my whole life, I don't care, I'm gonna do music. So I was really dedicated and I was really motivated to do. And I had just that feeling of proving myself all the time. Uh, meanwhile, I had a girlfriend and a high school and had some friends going out in the night and drinking beers. It was a really tough combination and I I had to choose or I, I was just in a roller coaster and things went so fast because we did contests and we won this and that and eventually your ego is you know like oh yeah I'm you when you get first place or something and you whatever you get applause or something when you're on stage and you're that young you pff, we had no coach or something to tell us how to handle and how to deal with it you know so eventually I had to choose to say like, I don't want to do high school anymore. I had just one year to, to go, but it, it was too much pressure. So I, I said that to my parents, like, I'm, I'm going to quit high school. And my parents were like, no, no, don't quit high school. You know, like just graduate and stuff. Um, and then you can do conservatory or something, but I couldn't handle it anymore. I was just, so much difference of life, uh, what I did as a kid compared with all my other friends. Um, so I 
Yeah, my parents had a solution. I had a solution, and they found a high school uh, across the country, so and to the west to Rotterdam, and that high school was located in a conservatory. So yeah, you know, go there and see if you can go at that school. But I had to do audition because it was really a pre-conservatory thing. So you had results from school and you had results from music. Um, I did audition and they made exception. You can go at this school. Wow, that is amazing. I am surrounded by kids from my sa from the same age, which has the same ambition. Meanwhile, I'm at school, but. To be honest, the, the the level was much higher than I am used to. I was just in a local music school and I learned some things, but there was much more to learn and things I've never learned before. So that was one thing. Uh, then I had to adjust with all and adapt all all the things of of with friends and stuff like that, making friends and. You know, little village, big city, world city, um, had to move and live on my own. Uh, never done that before. I was, I don't know, 17, 18 years old or something. I had a girlfriend back at the, the village. Uh, my friends I had to leave behind. My parents were not there. It was a two and a half, three hours drive. Uh, I, there were a lot of things I had to take account for and, and just know the whole public system. And when I was biking in the village, I had not to watch out or something for cars or whatever. And I mean, yeah, just some, but this was like all oh, the cars came from everywhere. And suddenly there was a tram in front of me and whew, a lot of things. Um, I managed to to do my washing clothes and stuff like that and cooking and everything went okay but the whole circumstances of being alone uh, was pretty hard lots of other details i would spare you um, it's not really um yeah it's important but it's okay uh it were, it, there were hard times it's just uh, there was so much and um I just needed to keep up with uh, everything what was new to live on my own to make food to wash my clothes to go to school at, at you know at the right time because I was the only one there was no parent saying like hey you need to go or whatever and I needed suddenly to grow up I needed to suddenly need to be uh, an adult so that was pretty intense and most of the kids you know at that school lived at an aunt or lived close close and and they could you know go by train or something um so yeah it was it was a it was an overwhelming time from yeah the moving to from a small village to a big city so I had to adapt so much that it took all my energy. Um, I had one year of high school and I had to graduate, so there was pressure was on. Um, I suddenly needed to fit in and work together with people I didn't know. Um, it was pretty tough and just overwhelming. Um, as a as a young kid, you had nobody around you which could support you or show you the way how to live there. And eventually, I got used to it, but it was still overwhelming uh, with um, the tasks I needed to do. There was even, you know, a music teacher from the conservatory where I had to go and had to play three jazz standards every week and needed to play the whole song with melody and eventually um, 
guide yourself with the left hand and play a solo in the right hand and stuff. And that was just too much. I couldn't handle it anymore. I had to sing notes from from sheets, uh, classical stuff. I had no idea. I mean, what what the you know? <laughs> it was crazy. I was maybe a too. I was maybe a big too big too yeah a, a step too far. I think. Um, a, a, a too big step um so yeah i worked my uh I, I worked so much and 17 hours of the day i was just going 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 i had just sleep and i had to go again and i mean i just learned to cook for myself but eventually i had just to cook in the night for the next day because i had to go to school and after school i could study in a room uh, with a piano and practice and then when i was hungry i could heat up my dinner which i made the night before and put it in the microwave and eat and go until closing time at 10 o'clock and then i went back again fixing all the stuff cooking again for the next day practicing a bit still and in midnight i had to sleep wake up again go do homework when i don't know you know it was just overwhelming with all stuff so it was that heavy that i had injury in my wrists uh it's like uh, an elastic band which you have around your wrists uh, and it went too tight um, with both hands and as you hear I still have it it's uh, still the pain I feel from that moment and that time and that's pretty hard not fun you know these stories uh, I had to uh, they sent me to a special medical uh, hospital which were specialized in those cases of, I don't know, sports and music and stuff like that. And many people apparently have this injury uh, and the only thing was surgery. So they had to cut the elastic band, put some, I don't know, skin from my ass and put it together so the band was the a bit more wider so it's you won't hear this and it is not painful anymore 99 percent of chance it would work well it didn't work because i didn't do it i just thought like this is not a solution i just did too much i am i'm burned out i cannot do it anymore so i have to choose which what which direction I have to go because high school is not working. Meanwhile, I had to do music and it was totally new for me with lots of things. Meanwhile, I had to learn to live on my own without any support and with all other cir circumstances, I will spare you. Um, yeah, meanwhile, my friends back there in the in my little old village uh i had just and my girlfriend uh, w w was there so it was really alone pretty lonely time pretty depressing of course i had some friends and i had some fun but it was just irresponsible to live like this it went hard more hard when i heard from my music teacher that i never will reach conservatory in my life ever that's what he literally said to me and that was like a knife in my heart it was really it was like i did everything for music and a music teacher from concert from the conservatory is telling me that i will never reach conservatory ever i will never be accepted at the conservatory um that was really painful and at the same time my girlfriend from the Oliveira village broke up with me and afterwards i found out my best friend was with my girlfriend so it was terrible it was really terrible to experience 
something like that in my life. Um, I, I had no friends for real. The friends I had at the high school, the new high school, had to go home. So they couldn't, I mean, sometimes they spent the night or something, but I was most of the time just alone and yeah, didn't really have the feeling anymore to live. My window was almost a solution because I was, I think, on the fourth floor or third floor of a big building in Rotterdam and uh, yeah, it was really hard. Um, I just were lay. I was just laying in my bed and 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 woke up and stood up when I had to drink water or something, and and I went back again, laying in bed, thinking that my life was over, my love was over, my music was over. I never will ex be accepted at a conservatory ever in my life. And one person told me that that thing that whoa. So, to continue, I had the guts to get up again and thought like, okay, you know, that guy is saying that to me, but is it true? There was an open day in Utrecht uh, at the conservatory, so I could go there. I just go there without any expectations, or I mean the expectation that they would say the same, and just to get... To be sure like is this for real am i really that bad in music or so i went there and the crazy thing was i played my own song it's called satisfied uh, a teacher was didn't even knew what i was playing and he played next to me at the at the other grand piano and it was amazing and it felt he understood me so much and he said like what where where do you gonna do uh audition this year or are you gonna do audition it's like well i've heard just recently from my teacher i will never be accepted at conservatory ever in my life and he was so shocked and he thought like what and i just heard this totally totally different story i just heard the opposite he said like you know that's not true if you do audition somewhere or wherever you will be accepted and it's like what what's going on here so from that moment i just thought like okay i'm gonna take this 50 50 chance i believe this guy more than the guy who told me that i will never reach the conservatory ever so talk with my parents we're sitting at a dinner and I talked with them and I said like, you know what, I'm uh, I'm about to quit high school again <laughs> um, with a reason that I, I have now two months or something to really prepare myself for the auditions at the conservatory. I choose this conservatory, this conservatory and this conservatory and if then it doesn't work, then I'm out and I'm so then I'm OK, then I'm, I'm, I'm I have peace with it. So my parents agreed and I quit high school there as well. Um, it was hard, it was not fun, uh, but I needed to because my life was like, uh, what do you call that, scattered, shattered in pieces. And I had to get up and fix myself so i was checking what the auditions all wanted to you know what i needed to do to do the audition so a lot of new things i need to, needed to learn i was not ready for it at all so two months i had to prepare myself and i prepared myself and did audition at the conservatory yeah that was one part of my life um i did some i did two auditions i had three but at both of the auditions i was accepted so that was so amazing to hear and they were so happy with me um, one side note was that i was questioning them if they could promise me that i won't lose my feeling um, they just didn't took me seriously and laughed about it um, 
I think at that moment I didn't care. I wish that I would say yes, of course, we will promise, but I thought like, what the heck? I just had, when I was seven years old, this was my dream. And it came true, I'm at the conservatory, I'm okay, I will go. So I, will, I went to the conservatory um, and it was a blast. It was really amazing. Um, so many people around me and I had a really nice class as well. We had really a, a nice vibe. Um, lots of home parties, you know, like, uh, I don't know, what do you call those home parties? Yeah, home party, huh? No, home party? Lots of, how do you call that again? I'm not even knowing anymore how it is calling. Well, you know what I mean, new home and a party, um, lots of fun and stuff like that. Uh, but then the tasks came as well, you know, I, I was burned out, uh, but I was accepted and, you know, just forget everything and enjoy. And it was really cool and it was really fun and new things to learn and new things to play and everything. Um, so, yeah, that was the first year. Um, but in the middle of the first year, it was again that 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 ball what was going you know the snowball effect stuff and in a, in a good way i think because um a lot of concerts a lot of bands a lot of rehearsals a lot of uh guiding with exams and stuff like that and there was just no moment to s sit still i i became a piano teacher at a music school um and meanwhile, I did just conservatory uh, and it just went going and going on and on and on and on. And I forgot my own personal piano tasks as well. You know, I needed to still do the exams to reach the next year. And it was just overwhelming as well. There was no time that mu there was not that much time at all to write music. I mean, uh, yeah. As you will see, there are some songs, but that was all in exhaustion and just, you know, use the time you still have or something. Uh, I was just eventually just worn out and I asked my teachers, like, what am I going to do? I mean, I'm totally exhausted. I cannot go anymore. And nobody really did see that from me uh, I was always a happy and positive guy you know um, but when I went back at home to you know when I went back after the day it was like I'm exhausted I was laying down and I could stand I could not stand up and I was pretty depressed I was not happy at all um, I mean I was happy to see all those people that was fun but the whole thing around it was just too much for me and all the rehearsals and, and prior of, of like all the things. I was a perfectionist in my music. I was really like, I wanted to do the best out of me and I couldn't anymore. I was so overworked. I can I cannot do those things. I can I cannot be at a play at two places at the same time, you know, but I still said yes. So I needed to do and I wanted to do it perfect, but I couldn't anymore. And eventually I went more and more like downwards, you know, I, I had no no energy for it and time for it. So, for example, there was one concert I needed to do or performance and I was just studying the, the songs for the first time in the train. I was searching on the internet for the chords and I wrote those things down and it's like, okay, something like this, something like that. And when I arrived at the train, like uh, a half hour later, I did sound check and, and yeah, play uh, play live. And, and no, it didn't went perfect at all. Or I was watching the whole time the, the MacBook. I was not even listening to the music anymore i had no respect for the people where i where uh, where i was playing with because they did study and they could play the songs and i just yeah i could play the song but it was copy paste and 
I didn't even enjoy the song because and it was not even respect for the for the artist itself you know who who did write the song so lots of those things happened more and more and I was driving this way and that way and it just kept on going and my teacher said crazy enough say yes to everything so I did say yes to everything so it went even worse <sighs> and then it was done I couldn't go anymore and uh, crazy enough the the opportunity to go to America and play concerts was going on uh, I did write some songs with a good friend of mine that time um, in the spare time we still had uh, and we uh, yeah we were about to go to the other side of the world I mean we were both were like 20 21 years old um, but at the same time I was burned out I, I couldn't anymore I had even a doctor's license for, of a doctor's permission thing of don't do anything these six months and more uh, so many things you know I wanted to do this but I couldn't anymore but I have this opportunity but I had to do this as well I, I lived just more lives at one time and yeah so did I go to America 